Dear friends, I am back again introducing you to my bookshelf. There are a lot to introduce, uh, but today first I introduce two books on real analysis, my favorites, uh, you can say. So when I first started my career as a mathematical career, as a student of mathematics, as an undergraduate student at St. Xavier's College, Calcutta, the first class was taken by Professor Ram K. Ghosh on mathematical analysis. He and other professor, Professor Maiti from some other college in Calcutta, possibly, or maybe Xavier's, no, I think from some other college. They had a book. So, but he didn't recommend that book to us. He recommended a book called Principles of Mathematical Analysis by Rudin. And in the mathematical world, this is called the baby Rudin, possibly Rudin's most simplest book. So, I still remember that when he used to speak, suppose he speaks about what is the meaning of that as x tends to a, the function fx goes to the limit l. And he used to start by telling let epsilon be greater than zero no matter how small. And his voice used to boom. It was a booming voice and it used to reverberate along the, in the whole class. And now that thing has so been so much ingrained into our psyche of his student that today also if I want to take a class and I want to talk about limit, I, I would always say that let epsilon be greater than zero no matter how small. That is the influence of the teacher. Now, routine is not a, such a very simple book to read because it is very terse. It is a book just, it doesn't only deal with one variable uh, analysis. And what is real analysis? Real analysis is the rigorization of calculus. Where you look at calculus, what you have learned in a more rigorous way. You talk more in terms of sequences. You talk in more in details about series. You talk about power series. You talk about sequence of functions and many, many things. This book is not so simple because it moves around in various different domains. For example, it talks about real line, it talks about metric spaces, it talks about higher dimensional things, it talks about the remanent functions of several variables, it talks about differential forms, so it talks about Lebesgue integral, so a lot and lot of things of analysis are compactly put into this book. If you are doing a, if you are a research student in mathematics, this book should be with you. I think the book that you are seeing in the screen, this is a very old one, this is a, one of the first books I bought from my pocket money from when I was in Xavier's. You can see even my name was there. I, I do not know. I think my, my, I, had, I had somewhere down the line, I had written on my name. You can see my name also here, Joydeep Dutta SXC Math. But the problem was this. One of my friends took this book and he didn't return when I left uh, Calcutta. And then a few months down the line in the COVID lockdown, after the COVID lockdown, he wrote to me from, told me from Bangalore on our WhatsApp group that, you know, I have this book of routine left and it is your name when you with your, it's with me. So I had to buy a new, old, again, an Indian edition of it, but this is the uh, original edition, but he returned this book to me. It's a big treasure to me. So this book has many, many important results given in a very short, terse way. Terse in the sense doesn't mean that they are they have just not given you proofs just written the statements no they have tried to explain the things in a nice way but what rudin does is that he does the proof in a very short way in the sense that it leaves some spaces it leaves out some steps and you have to fill in the steps so this book is fantastic because it starts with the first his first chapter is not what about uh, this first chapter is about the real and complex number system. So it doesn't just speak about real and real numbers. It also talks about complex numbers. The second chapter is about basic topology, the structure of spaces. So then it talks about numerical sequence and series. It's a very, very different kind of book on mathematical analysis. It's not the style which you see. It's not the one variable calculus book or just a function of real analysis. It just talks about real real variables one real variable no it, it, it is much much different than that so what is important with when you walk through this book when you go to a relevant section try to do the problems it's not that if you talk about this 
if you have this book you have to do all the problems you need not do all the problems you can do few of them and and many of them you can't do so don't worry about it just make a try what is important for example here you they speak about not only riemann integral but look at it in a more generalized way riemann steel tie is integral where when you are doing a partition of the interval and then you are taking the difference the length of a partition instead of writing xi plus 1 minus xi is equal to delta xi you take a monotonically increasing function and say that this change delta xi would be now calculated as alpha x alpha's value at xi plus 1 minus alpha's value at xi so so this is the way so instead of just having xi plus 1 minus xi you are now having functional values so that gives you riemann stiltage integral because this riemann stiltage integral helps you to understand probability theory that sort of integration is used in probability theory so similarly uh, this book so it's it, it's very interesting for example a lot of interesting results for example monotonic functions if you ask anybody who has not very carefully studied real analysis won't be able to tell you that for monotonic functions you can only have countable discontinuities in a given interval you are, or on the whole real line you cannot have uncountable discontinuities try to visualize a function which is discontinuous at every point of an interval and still it is monotonic and every point it is there is a discontinuity at every point of the interval say say zero one interval it will it will not be possible try it out when i was a youngster i, I thought about trying to do that and then i understood it every time i was failing so that gives you a even if you understood the proof that gives you a much more strength so the next book today i want to introduce is a, a book called counter examples in analysis it's very important in mathematics to talk about counter examples so it is written by gelbaum and omsted have a look counter examples in analysis it is very important to know that under these conditions for example such a things happen it is very important to know if these conditions are taken off or some of the conditions are taken off from a result will those things still happen or some things will change so counter examples for for example let me give you for example a function whose derivative is finite but unbounded on a closed interval it doesn't But the function itself could be bounded, right? Now, now a function whose derivative exists and is bounded, but possesses no extreme value on the closed interval, is bounded but possesses no extreme value. There is no minimizing or maximizing point on a closed interval. So it is a function that is everywhere continuous but nowhere differentiable. There is a famous function of Weierstrass truss. very constructed a function that which is everywhere continuous but nowhere differentiable it's a very ghost type function it involves trigonometric uh, function it's a function written as an infinite series called the weierstrass function and let me tell you that as benoit mandelbrot used to say that you will understand calculus much better if you know at the very outset that every continuous function need not have a derivative so this book has a lot of lot of fascinating things which involve it talks about analysis not only of one variable but of more than one variable talk, talks about metric spaces topological spaces and very uh, important uh, ideas are there so once you know counter examples you will have a better hold on the result better hold on the theory uh, so i would uh, for example i'll just give you one more example from here and uh, a, a divergent series whose general term approaches zero right for example 1 by n a convergent series summation an and a divergent series summation bn such that modulus of an is always greater than modulus of bn it looks very unlikely that bn is diverging but the modulus of an would always be bigger than modulus of b and while modulus of a summation a is actually converging so with this two i would ask my camera man or woman my daughter to come up a bit and show the books that i like introduce in the next uh, 
discussion the book of calculus by klein an intuitive and physical <coughs> approach is a very beautiful book and also a book on history of mathematics by cards because here you will actually get a sense of how math has developed and also some books which i will talk about curved spaces and what fourier transformation for engineers and you can of course this is too too heavy a book to speak about and also i'll speak about this uh, book about calculus right mm. there's two volume books by apostol so with this i thank you for being patient and hope you find this little bookshelf introductions interesting and thanks to my little daughter she's little to me of course she's a <clears throat> she's in our 12th grade class so but thanks to her she's taking she be very patient and getting this thing done for her father and so good night have a nice weekend